blessed and dear ones of my heart. I, Lanello, have come as only a father could know. What is the meaning of the will of God? For that will demands of you obedience. You are given many trials throughout your incarnations to learn how to give that obedience. First it is upon the father, the mother's knee. For you have commanded in the realms of the octaves of light that you would come into embodiment and would learn from your parents. Learn from the situation of life which you have elected to embrace. Your past karma, the associations of life, all weighing in to the fabric of your present incarnation. This is why the Ascended Masters have deemed it necessary to give you an understanding of how to deal with your returning karma. That karma that creates a magnet to draw you into certain initiations so that you might make the wise choice, so that you might balance that debt once and for all. Having been given the blessing of the knowledge of the violet flame that you can invoke to transmute those karmas, before they ever erupt in the physical octave, before they are such a pressure upon your vehicles of consciousness, that like it or not, you are propelled to walk through certain trials and tribulations. This in itself, is a great teacher of obedience. For indeed, the vehicles you wear, the mind, the emotional body, your physical body, all come under the subject of the pressures of returning karma when they have not been transmuted by the light and erased from your history. So knowing that you are coming in to a new embodiment, thrust into all manner of situations, some good, some not so pleasant, but all the while there is within you enough of the presence of the mind of God constantly reporting to your heart flame what is the right decision, the right course, the right path. Will you be obedient to that inner voice? Will you have the clarity of consciousness to know what is the inner voice of the presence of God or the screaming and the wailing of the untransmuted substance 
playing upon the mind, the emotions, the physical body. This in itself requires great attention, great preparation for life. But all the while, regardless of whether you pay attention or not, you must go through that life. For once the breath enters the body, you are off on a new adventure. O oh, blessed hearts, looking back as I may at my incarnations and the record that I have etched in time, I can so clearly see why the obedience to the will of God takes first and foremost importance in life. For when you lose sight of the presence of God, there is a clouding of the vision, a stirring of the emotions in agitation, and a dis-ease that falls upon the body that parts the way between you and God. It does not have to be forever. It can always be re-established. For there is no thing which you can create that will permanently dissolve away your opportunity to be embraced by God. But what must be present is enough love to will the presence of God. Therein is the key to being embraced and the principle of the divine love, the divine romance that you outpicture in every incarnation. It matters not how many incarnations, but that you are firmly fixed in the embrace of the will of the presence of God. As students of the Ascended Master's teachings, you have understood that that presence of God is indeed, first and foremost, the I Am Presence, that mighty, luminous, electronic body that has never left the realms of perfection that is the source of your being that has elected to will your own heart flame into these realms of the physical octave so that you as the mighty I am presence one in the same are given the opportunity to further wisdom's ray in creating more of God, in establishing glorious realms in which the presence of God may expand. But oh, be weary of that puny human ego that would like to take credit for the existence of all things, even down 
to the decisions that you make. When you are right with God, when you are in the presence of the mind of God, it is that mind that is charting your course, making the decisions, even the smallest, seemingly insignificant, but nonetheless decisions that you make, that make up the fabric of your life. Your God presence has never desired anything for you save the presence of God to be where you are. When you have enough of the tethering in your conscious awareness, in the emanations of your emotions, in the very vibration of your physical body that is the will and the presence of God. Then, blessed hearts, you know what it means to be obedient. For it takes obedience to send your thoughts upon the air, to allow for the creation of your touch upon the elemental forces of nature, to respond to that presence of God. Through these vehicles you wear, you have a greater appreciation for what works and what does not. Those things that have been passed down through the ages, that ring true to the heart, that allow you to have a resonance that announces to your consciousness, this must be so, for I have lived it. I have touched it. I know it to be true. That blessed hearts is the voice of your presence announcing to you that there is a familiar chord ringing. Pay attention. Learn. Adopt what you are able. Perhaps it will be seemingly incredulous, far too reaching for you to begin to believe. But perhaps it is only because the time has not been right in this incarnation for there to be an unfurling of illumination's flame from the altar of your heart, to leap into your own outer mind and fill it with enough of the presence of the mind of God to announce to you that on the horizon awaits you a new day that is filled with greater opportunity. If you will but be obedient to what you know is right within your heart. The mind will lie to you if it is the human mind at work. The emotions can never be trusted if they have been allowed to run rampant 
and absorb the riptides of human emotion. And certainly, the physical body is going to be responsive to these vehicles following the habit patterns that are thrust upon it by the mind and the emotions, following the appetites that are bred within the human mind and are charged by the emotional body. So you see, blessed hearts, there is hierarchy within your own physical body, your own emotional body, your own mind. When you ignore hierarchy, you ignore the opportunity to learn how to be obedient to your own God presence. And oh, how quickly most of mankind are wont to scoff when they are required to be obedient to some part of life for a time. Consider how you would train a little child to know the difference of right and wrong. Surely they require your example first. They require the tutoring by the word. They require enough love to know to pay attention to your authority. For have you ever thought that for there to be obedience, there must be love? You cannot love when you are filled with fear. And where there is the absence of love, there cannot be obedience. When there is recalcitrance, rebellion, and all manner of energy sown by your returning karma that would separate you from the presence of God, there cannot truly be the love of God that you would desire. You may give lip service to it. You may enter into certain actions trying to prove your love. But until the heart opens and you are submissive to that heart, there is no room for love, for the recalcitrance of the mind has put a steel grip along with your emotional body upon the flame of love of your heart. Oh, the chameleon acts in which you might from time to time engage thinking that somehow you are fooling those about you. But unless there is honesty with who you are, first and foremost to yourself, you cannot truly know the presence of God. Now, I, Lanello, have not given you these examples by way of condemnation, but by wisdom's ray that you might look first 
and foremost into your own life and determine if there is obedience to God in your life, where that obedience exists cannot be at the exclusion of the obedience to love or to wisdom, for they all work hand in hand, just as the threefold action of your own heart flame, reporting to you, conveying by you, and establishing for you an atmosphere that is the vibration of the love of God. All of this is so that you might, at some point in your life, establish enough of the current of love to draw to you the current of the power of the will of God so that you might exercise the greatest of talents, the ascension in the light, reuniting in the oneness with the light of your God presence, knowing that there forevermore you will remain, utilizing the glorious talents that you have exercised and gained mastery while in physical incarnation. As the Choham of the great pranic breath of the air element, I know well the requirement for God obedience. Let the touch of the presence of God establish within you a current that fixes in time and space the presence of your own mighty I am. Then you will know God obedience. You will know the Father principle, for you will have put into action the command of the Father Principle of your own God Presence and created with the Mother Principle a world in which the Presence of God is known. I, Lanello, commend you to the presence of the will of God.